Hey everyone, welcome to week 22, day one, Monday. And today we start our uh, when to stop week. We're gonna try and figure out when it is okay to stop a painting and just call it done. So it's gonna be a pretty tough week, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's get started. Now for this week, we're gonna do something a little bit different. And I think we're gonna try to answer something that we can only answer for ourselves, which is when to stop. Now, spoilers, I don't really think we're gonna be able to reach an answer during this week because it is a very, very tough question to answer. And like I said, only we can answer that question. The tough part about this is that this question can only be answered also by experience. Let me try to contextualize this a little bit. I remember when I was going to a painting class, I would hear this constantly, and maybe you guys have heard this from your teachers too. I would be working on a painting, and let's say it was gonna be a seven hour session painting. And in the two and a half hour mark or in the two hour mark, I would have had my drawing down and I was doing my block in. And suddenly, you know, my teachers, it could be David or uh, Steve or Max, they would come by and they would tell me, you know what, that looks amazing, stop. And I would be like, what? What are you talking about? Like we have four hours left in class. Like. This is crazy. Like, I have a plan for this painting. This is insane. I want to keep going. And they would be like, you know what? Just trust me. Maybe start another painting, but stop. This is really, really good what you have here. Just stop. And I've talked about how you have to trust your teachers. And many times I would just stop and I would have another board or I would turn my board. Or many times it was frustrating because, you know, I didn't have money. So I would just have that one board and I would just have to pull out my sketchbook or like a pad and draw for the rest of the class just to keep this initial block in or what I saw as something like a very premature version of a painting being deemed as a quote unquote finished painting. And, you know, I was like, I don't see it, but I'm going to trust them and I'm just going to leave it. And that would happen constantly. And I would feel like it was bittersweet because they were telling me, this is really good. You've actually reached something that is very, very powerful, very quickly, and it's very good. And you should grab onto it. You should really understand that you've gotten here. You've gotten to this place and acknowledge it and celebrate it and just have something to remind you of that little small triumph that you had today. And that was the very cool part. And I totally understand that part. But the bitter part was in that same message, they would also be conveying that they didn't trust you to go ahead and keep those great qualities that they saw in those first two hours and believe that you could hold on to them and then finish a painting strongly. So they were telling you, in a way, you know, you're going to mess up. We know you're going to mess up. We know this is not going to turn out good. <laughs> we know what the end of this story is going to be. So let's quit while we're ahead. Uh, let's celebrate this moment. Let's remember this moment. Just put it aside and be happy. Call it quits. <laughs> Retire and end on a good note. <laughs> and that was the message. It makes you uncomfortable. It makes you smile. And then you go like, what? You don't trust me? Like, you, you know so much about me that you know that I'm going to mess this up. But I think eventually what happens is that you become kind of frustrated with the message and you tell yourself, no, I'm actually going to keep going and I'm going to show them. Like, I'm going to show them that I can actually pull this off. That if I was able to get to a good place in the first couple of hours, I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to be able to hold on to those things and carry them throughout the whole session of the painting. And maybe it was a seven hour session or maybe we were lucky enough for the model to uh, come back next week. So it was going to be a 13, 14 hour session and you could hold on to that big essence that you got in the first two hours. And that would feel like a complete triumph. Oof. It pains me to say that <laughs> many, many times, more often than not, they would tell me stop. And, you know, sometimes I did and I put my board aside. And other times I was like, nah, dude, trust me. Like, I can do this. You have to believe in me. 
I can do this. I've gotten us to this point. I can take us further. <laughs> and the truth was that I ruined the painting. I completely ruined the painting. I remember specifically, specifically, and I adore Max. I adore Max Ginsburg. And I remember his daughter, Liana, was there that day painting. We were painting this wonderful model, George, and I had a back pose. And he was kind of hunching over. I still remember exactly the painting. And this was like over 20 years ago. And I think it was probably the second session. It, it wasn't the first 30 minutes. So it was probably, it wasn't the first 20 minutes. It, 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 we did 20 minute pose, five minute break. So it was probably on the 40 minute mark, which is, you know, it, it's enough for you to do a really nice painting, but um, still it's 40 minutes. It's like nothing. And I remember having this great start of a painting, the really, really good start of a painting. It's one of those moments that you you see yourself and it's not like an out of body experience where you look at your painting. And I'm like, damn, I'm doing this. This is crazy. <laughs> this is really good. I'm, I'm possessed by some other great painter. And I looked at it and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Those rare moments that you feel pretty good about yourself. And Max came by and he was like, this is an amazing painting. You know, this is really, really good. So he called everyone. He's like, everyone come by, please. You know, there's 30 people, over 30 people in class. It's like, come by, come here, come here. Let's gather around Nicholas's painting. That's my Max Ginsburg, by the way, which is totally on. Like, I'm hitting it like crazy. Um, and um, I'm going to stop doing it. And he was like, you know, gather around. This is a great, great start. Everyone should see what he's doing like right now. And I was feeling like, okay, you know, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you for the compliments, but that's that's a lot. That's a little too much. So with all his compliments, he just generated this insane amount of expectation with my painting. And I mentioned Liana, and Liana is like a crazy, incredibly talented painter. And Liana was there, and, and she kind of like shoved him, and she was like, Max, shut up. What are you doing? That's way too much pressure. You know, shut up. <laughs> I was happy with all the attention. I was happy that he was just throwing all these compliments um, to me. But when I sat down and I started to paint, I was almost like hyper-conscious of everything that I was about to do with the painting. Every single decision that I was about to make with the painting weighed so heavily on me that I ruined the painting. So he didn't go and see me in the next pose. I think he saw me probably two poses after, three poses after. So maybe after an hour, he went to see how I was doing again. And whatever was there at the 40 minute mark was so diluted. I remember, I remember this look <laughs> and I remember the tone of his voice. He was like, well, you know, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. And I was like, I know, I know it is. And then I remember Liana just telling him, you know, I told you, I told you, why would you do this? Like, that was crazy. And it was so well intended. He was just bringing up attention to something that he felt that I was doing that was really, really good. But what he created inadvertently, like I said, these were awesome intentions. What he created in me was this absurd amount of awareness of what I did and what I was about to do. That's what was very important. And it became unbearable, almost. I realized that I had created a standard within my painting that I had to follow. And I didn't know how to do that. The painter that I had painted the first 40 minutes of that painting was not the painter that I was gonna be able to access. <laughs> I wasn't gonna be able to paint like that person from then on, because, you know, maybe if I had my headphones and nobody had told me anything, maybe I would have ruined the painting just by myself. I just wouldn't have noticed what I was doing and I would have just kept going and then killed the painting. And that's about it. That's end of the story. And I would have sighed and been like, oh, fuck. I had this really nice painting like two hours ago and it's gone. But what happened was that every time I would go to my palette, I was doubting myself. I would be like, am I going to cover something that's good? Am I going to build on something that he thought was great? 
or am I going to just dilute it and take it to a place where the vestige of this really nice blocking is not even going to be appreciable? And I'm sad to say that this happened constantly. Not Max just flooding me with compliments about my blocking, about my start, but about me being conscious that I had a really, really good start and that because I kept going, I ruined the painting. And this is where this conversation is very, very tough. Because ideally, you would think that if all you want are great experiences through painting, if that's all you want, you know, you want to feel good about yourself, you want to feel great about your painting, you just quit while you're ahead, right? You just say, you know what? Why gamble with this painting? This is already looking good. It exists. It is, you know, this is a tangible painting. And I will have evidence of this being a good session, of it being a good day. And I've always said, small triumphs are so important during your career as a painter. Feeling like you've gotten to a place where you've learned something, where you're able to understand something to a point where you can depict it through painting or that you can see like a like small hints of your understanding just showing up and you can say okay there's something there like i really like it because something happened these little moments where it clicks we need those because painting is filled with so many moments of frustration that we need those small moments if it wasn't for those small moments we really wouldn't have the energy to just keep going and going and going so ideally, you would think, wow, this path that I've chosen to understand my surroundings, the place I belong to, my life, the universe through paint is so tough that let me have these moments, you know, let me stop, let me quit while I'm ahead. But, <laughs> you know, there's an impulse in us that tells us, I want to keep going. I want to see what's further up ahead. I want to see how far I can push myself. I want to see if I can grab on to all this essence that I've been able to recognize and carry it through the execution of a painting. And many, many times, more often than not, we just feel super brave and we just fill ourselves with courage and say, I'm going to keep going. And we ruin paintings. Oh my God, do we ruin paintings. <laughs> it has happened to me. It has happened to 100% of the people that have attended many of my workshops. I walk by and we both acknowledge, you know, she could be painting something incredible. And we both go like, oh, that's looking hella good. That's awesome. That's a great moment of a painting. And we both smile and she's like, hell yeah, I'm going to keep going. And then an hour later, she's like, don't talk to me. Don't come by. Just walk around me. Don't even look at my painting. I don't even want to see your look. <laughs> and it's so amazing because we both acknowledge that that moment was gone. So what I've done now in my workshops is just talk to people that want to keep going, which is something that I encourage too. And I just tell them, okay, let's make a mental note of this moment. Let's acknowledge this moment. Let's celebrate it. And let's just tell this moment, you know, you're awesome. You're fantastic. Thank you for giving me the chance to see you, to understand you, to observe you, to celebrate you, but I'm going to keep going. And we have that little moment with the painting, and then we keep going. And, you know, three hours later, we mourn the painting because it is gone, <laughs> but we remember it. And in remembering it, we tried to recognize what was working. So it may be gone, but it is a learning experience. We, we were able to extract a ton of knowledge out of that great, great moment. We don't have it anymore, but who cares? We don't have it. We don't have to record it. We don't have to have evidence of it. Nowadays, we have a cell phone, so we just take a photo, and there it is. But it doesn't matter. Like, who cares? Who cares if it's gone? This is where the essence of this week lies in. This is where we recognize the importance of the question that we're posing ourselves during this week. When to stop really means I am going to have this feeling that I should stop, but I'm going to keep going. And I'm, you know, 99 out of 100 times, because I'm sorry to say that, but I think that the percentage may not be quite that, may not be quite 99%, but it certainly feels like it. We are going to keep going 
and we are going to ruin our paintings. We are going to paint over all these wonderful choices that we had initially established. The most obvious reaction is we're going to tell ourselves, why didn't I listen to myself and why didn't I stop? Why am I so stubborn that I have to keep going? Why, why, why I should have stopped? Now, this is the cool thing. Painting has a way of teaching us that the end of painting is not really to have a nice painting every single time. Like, who cares? Who, who cares if the painting is great or not every single time you sit down and paint? That's never, ever the point of painting. The point of painting is sitting down and painting for two, three, four, five hours, six months, two years, whatever you choose. But it's never about having this previous knowledge that you're going to end up with something that's nice. Ugh. If I could predict that about my painting experience, I would never sit down and paint. Why would I? Who wants to do that? Sit down and paint just knowing that you're going to make a great painting? It would become so easy. Who wants that? You never learn from easy experiences. What we're going to do during this week is kind of acknowledge that feeling. And we have two choices. We can grant ourselves the chance to say, you know what? I'm going to stop. But you're not stopping because of cowardice. This is a week where we just tell ourselves, I actually know that many, many, many times I just keep going. I keep going and keep going and keep going. And I've done this so many times that I know that I am going to step all over these really nice decisions that I thought were quite beautiful. And we can tell ourselves during this week for five days, five paintings. What is five paintings in our lifetime? That's like nothing. We can tell ourselves, I'm actually going to stop. I'm going to stop where I feel this painting is balanced and powerful and raw. And it has all that initial energy that just fills my heart and just makes me smile. And that says, ah, oh, this is so good. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. I have no clue of defining what that means for each and every one of us. Maybe for some people it means five brush strokes. I mean, that's super hard, but <laughs> if that's what it means, it means five brush strokes. For other people, it's going to mean an hour worth of work. And to be fair, an hour's worth of work could be five brush strokes. So who knows? But for other people, it could be two hours. For other people, it could be just leaving a painting in a state that you usually don't leave it at, that you usually say, well, this is unfinished. Well, this is a quote unquote sketch, as if a sketch is a lesser painting. I think you guys already know my sentiment towards that. A painting is a painting is a painting. We are going to grant ourselves the chance to say, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it be. And not because I want to feel good about myself, not because I want to say, oh, look at this. Now suddenly, because I left my paintings at a stage where they were not threatening to me, now I feel like a great painter. Now all I have is the evidence of five paintings that tell the story of how amazing a painter I am. No, we're not going to pat ourselves on the back. We don't need that. If painting does not teach us humility every time we sit down and paint, then we're not painting. We don't want to feel like amazing painters. That's not a good feeling. But we want to be aware of that feeling of that bottled up energy that a painting can have when it's just starting to meld. And you know what? For this week, we're just going to leave them like that. The other alternative that we have is that you can make a mental note of that moment. You can really, really reach a heightened sense of awareness of that moment. You can explore it and you can try and understand it. You can try and extract all the good information that you see in it and try to learn from it and keep that. Treasure that. We can treasure our learnings. We don't have to treasure a painting. A painting is just an object. But the teachings, whatever you learn from it, that we can treasure. Those things are the ones that are super, super important for us. We're going to hold on to those and then we can keep working. And if you're able to keep those going and quote unquote finish a painting, again, I have no idea what that means. Wow, that's an amazing feeling. But at least you 
realized what you were carrying, like the responsibility of the things that you had to carry with you to that, you know, end goal. So we have two roads that we can take during this week. We either grant ourselves the opportunity to stop and we're not going to feel like lesser painters for it. We're not going to feel that we are just stopping because we're afraid. No, we're actually acknowledging all the great things that are happening and we want to learn from those. We're not doing it just to have evidence of those. Like I said, who cares? It's a painting. Or we can just keep going, but we try to carry all that good stuff with us. It's going to be heavy. This is going to be heavy lifting. But we're going to try to drag those across the finish line. And we'll see how that goes. If it ends well, that's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. If it doesn't, don't feel bad. That's awesome. You gave yourself the chance to learn from your painting at a great stage. It's going to be very, very tough uh, during this week because when to stop is something that nobody can teach you. You can listen to your teachers say or to the painters that you respect. She could say, hey, that's a great moment. Stop. And you can put all your trust in her and say, I'm going to stop. But if we need her approval for stopping every single time we paint, if we're looking for her validation, even though she's an amazing teacher and an amazing painter, we're not going to be learning anything. We're just going to be dependent on what she is telling us. And I recognize how we as teachers can have good intentions, but we also have to understand that we have to teach other people to recognize those moments and to make those decisions for themselves. Now, what is bound to happen? That you're going to ruin a ton of paintings. That you're going to have to step over everything that you've done that is good to know that you lost it. And that when you choose to risk all those things that are very raw and amazing about that initial energy of a painting because you want to take them further then that risk weighs heavily on you. And you are aware of the huge responsibility that you have to keep those things going. Is a painting where you keep those things going for a long time, let's say you recognize something amazing in the two-hour mark and the end painting is a 10-hour painting, a 20-hour painting, is that a better painting than the two-hour painting? No. Simple answer, no. You just did something different. We are not patting ourselves on the back because we were able to carry something very heavy for 20 hours instead of for two hours. Carrying it for two hours is as difficult as carrying it for 20 hours. So people that are able to keep going, they are not better painters. They are different painters. They wanted to make a different painting, not better. I really want to make that clear. So... We can't control what a painting is going to look like, but what we can control is what we choose to learn from it. And that's what we're going to concentrate on this week. So today, it was about big brushstrokes, just having a lot of energy and character to this painting of Jonathan, who, by the way, is a super soulful artist. I really connected with him as a person when I met him in one of my workshops, and I think he's absolutely a wonderful human being. And I've drawn him, and this is the first time I paint him, and I, I had a lovely time. So today was about that, just big construction brushstrokes and just letting it be, just the, the strength that is holding Jonathan together. So I, I really like that. Thank you guys for hanging out. Remember tomorrow, Spanish Tuesdays, Martes. So brush up on your Spanish and I'll see you guys tomorrow where we try to find a really nice balanced moment to stop. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.